In order to leave the mainland of New Brunswick, I must first be swallowed by the mouth of the beast, also known as the Grand Manan Ferry. An unusual event happened on the deck when a Cecropia moth landed on my arm before being blown onward by a breeze. In the distance, a mirage floats on the horizon. I've grown to expect the unusual out here, like this sign on the passenger deck. Apparently huddling close together is the best way to avoid ninjas approaching from four directions. After a one and a half hour sailing, the Swallowtail Lighthouse drifts by. The beast finds my jeep distasteful and chucks it out at the North Head Ferry Wharf. I'm now on the Fundy Island of Grand Manan. Here's something I haven't done for a while. Pulled into a campground, unserviced site, but not with my trailer, with a tent. I decided not to bring my trailer this trip. One reason, it's summer and uh, the weather is gonna be good. So why not bring out my old tent? And the other reason, is that I took a ferry and it would have cost me a lot more if I had taken my uh, my trailer than if I just packed a tent in my Jeep which is exactly what I did now hopefully I can remember how to set this up again I haven't used it for I don't know at least two two and a half years and the last time was in the winter time there's only two official campgrounds in Grand Manan, and neither is cheap. I chose the Anchorage Provincial Park located mid-island, which seemed to have the basics. But there's also a private campground in North Head. All set. Time to check this place out. But first let me introduce you to the region. Between the coast of Maine and the Atlantic provinces of Canada is a little green speck known as Grand Manan Island. Part of the province of New Brunswick, it is 34 kilometers or 21 miles long and only 18 kilometers or 11 miles wide. The west side is mostly inaccessible due to its rocky cliffs and high winds. The east side is a series of small villages and coves, all connected by the sea and the fishing industry. And there's only about 2,500 people that call the island home. The shores are rocky with tides around 16 feet or five and a half meters.
I think to fully appreciate the treasures of Grand Manan Island, you first have to understand what is missing. There's no Walmart, there's no McDonald's, no Burger King. There is, however, a local bakery full of fresh croissants and a little family restaurant that makes outstanding homemade pies. There's no traffic lights. And it's only when the ferry docks that you see any land traffic at all. The sea is king here, so it's the wharf and open ocean where you see the most activity. Especially as the lobster season draws to a close around the end of June. No subway, no theaters, there's no taxis. So for many not accustomed to this subtle lifestyle, it may be the perfect place to watch paint dry, grass grow, or iron rust. There's only one gas station, and there's very, very few public toilets. Which means you might have to lower your coffee consumption a little. So what does Grand Manan actually have? Well, the first on my list are the trails where you can hike, or bike. There are many, like this one at the hole in the wall. And it's always good to hike with a friend. The trail's namesake was kind of cool, but I felt something was missing from this rocky perspective. I needed another point of view. Which brings me to one of the most popular activities in Grand Manan, kayaking. Although I didn't bring my trailer, I was smart enough to bring my kayak. So I launched it at the Whale Cove Boat Launch. Third on the list of popular activities, bird watching, of course. The hole in the wall was just a short paddle away from Whale Cove, so I arrived at its shores within an hour. Water's crystal clear. You can see the seaweed. Having an inexpensive underwater action camera was really a bonus. There's even a jellyfish. This was a huge thrill for me as a person with a lifelong fear of water and it was only in recent years that I've been able to overcome it. This is the first time I could ever see this sea creature in its native environment. With the camera surfacing from the depths below, it emerges to a spectacular view of the hole in the wall. Oh, 
was short and sweet, but waves are getting a little rough. So don't think I want to be out in the open sea conditions like this. Time to head back. Yeah, I know it wasn't exactly Surf City, but I'm a bit of a wave wimp still. Baby steps. Uh oh, here comes a big wave. Oh no. Yeah. Whoa. Whew. So there's plenty of ways to keep active and fit, but what does Grand Manan offer for eye candy? It has a little color. And it has every color. It's got plenty of seashore. Now there are beaches in Grand Manan. And although the sand is darker and the water a little cooler in June, it's still a great place to get your feet wet. From the cliffs of the Southern Head Beach, the water sparkles across the surf. If I had to pick a word to describe the state of mind as you peer out into the vast expanse of blue water, it would probably be serenity. All stress is gone and your mind is clear to appreciate the ballet being performed below as the seaweed dances along the shore to the rhythm of the waves. soft purr of the fishing boats. Which reminds me, I haven't talked about food much. 
Now it's really not much of a surprise that if you love seafood, you'll love Grand Manan because it's one of the best places for lobster, scallops, and clams. But what if you're a vegetarian like me? Is there any attraction? Well, there is one absolutely incredible superfood and the best source in the entire world is right here. And it's sold in a little brown bag all along the island and it's called Dulce. What it is, is a special dried seaweed, purple. It's a superfood. It's really high in vitamins and minerals. It's got omega-3s, it's got vitamin A, C, uh, it's got iron, magnesium, calcium. It's got uh, iodine for your thyroid. It is an absolutely phenomenal food for your digestion, for your eyesight, for your brain. But how does it taste? It's a little salty and chewy, but it's not bad. It's like a healthy form of chewing tobacco. Probably really good in soups. It probably is an acquired taste, but it's pretty good. Dulce. If you go to Grand Manan, you got to try it. And did I mention lighthouses? Although there are several on the island, the one nobody can miss is the Swallowtail Lighthouse that greets you when you first arrive. Built in 1859, it has become a symbol of everything that is Grand Manan. There is one activity I have yet to mention, one that brings people from all over the world to the island, and that is whale watching. Unfortunately, I was a little too early in the year to see any, as August is one of the best months to see the whales. But I did at least see a seal, which was good enough for me. After a full day, it was time to head back to camp for a little rest. Now a backpack tent is pretty handy, but how does it really compare to my fiberglass camper? thing I never get used to is getting in and out of a tent. Oh. A little awkward. Now here's a mystery that's baffled the gossip columns for decades. On June 16th, 1974, James Brown and Barbara Streisand were seen leaving a New York nightclub and boarding a private yacht, but nobody knows where they went until now. But the best thing for me is Grand Manan has plenty of skipping rocks. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my others because I'm going skipping. <laughs>